Welcome to the tutorial for the Arab Spatial Development and Food Security Atlas. The objective of Arab Spatial is to improve access to quality data and to support decision and policy making for a food secure Arab world covering the 22 Arab countries from Mauritania in the west to Oman in the east. What makes Arab Spatial special? The Arab Spatial is a pioneering spatial experience that relates food security and development by including more than 100 indicators at the national, subnational, and pixel levels, often as time series data across the Arab world. It is based on an innovative framework developed by IFPRI that links the macro drivers of development, focusing on the economy and state, with the micro level, focusing on population and household welfare, to show how the two dimensions are interlinked and how external shocks, such as global food price hikes and natural disasters, as well as interventions in the form of policies and programs, affect availability of food, people's access to it, and the resulting nutritional status of individuals. There are three categories in the table of contents present on the left-hand side of the screen. Those three categories are consistent with the framework economy and state, population and household welfare, and crises and shocks. There is also the option to show different levels of boundaries and the option of including country, region, or governorate names on top of selected layers in the map. Let's start with the first category, economy and state. This category focuses on indicators that highlight time series for the macroeconomy, key sectors, and governance from 1990 till 2011 where available. For illustration purposes, we will take a couple of examples. Note that each layer or indicator chosen will appear on the left-hand side of the screen in your table of contents under your selection. Let's Take the total GDP per capita indicator. At the bottom of the screen, you will find place marks named legend and source and description. If you click legend, you find that this indicator, total GDP per capita, has seven categories for GDP per capita. For countries that have no data, those countries are shaded in gray. The sources and descriptions are of the indicators chosen. It gives information about the layer name or the variable chosen, the data source used for this variable, and the description of the variable. Also, at the bottom of the screen, we have a time slider. That allows us to display the indicators chosen from year to year. We can reset the map by either clicking on the little X in the circle on the right hand side of the indicator that's chosen, or we can click on the Arab Spatial Homepage button, or we can click on the button named Reset Map at the top right hand corner of the screen. Let's take another example to show another function of the Atlas. We will show how we can perform visual multivariate analysis using a couple of techniques programmed in the Atlas. The multi-layer mapping function allows us to produce customized maps with multiple indicators simultaneously. Let's go to economy and state. Let's select key sectors and choose agriculture, water, and energy, and choose the oil and gas indicator. Next. Let's go to the subcategory trade and transport, choose the indicator ports, then choose the indicator airports. We now have a map that has three indicators superimposed. To better view these indicators together, we may want to slightly fade out the colors of the indicator at the top. We have a scale from 0% to 100%. 0% implies complete transparency of the top indicator, and 100% implies zero transparency of the top indicator. Let's move on 
and reset the map. Now we come to the second category, population and household welfare. This category focuses on indicators that highlight data on the population, access to services, and poverty, malnutrition, and disease from 1990 till 2011 where available. Due to the nature of the data used, the data points are not in a time series format. Rather, they are point estimates. For illustration, let's choose one of the indicators. We'll choose child stunting. Because this indicator is a point estimate rather than a time series, it is helpful to select the latest estimate function that is located at the bottom of the screen. Click inside the box and we get the latest estimate for child stunting for each of our countries right there on the map. If, however, we are interested in only a specific year, we unselect the latest estimate indicator and choose the year that we are interested in. Clicking on latest estimate brings us back to the latest estimate that exists for this indicator for all the countries. Now, if you look at the child stunting indicator, we have an option to display this indicator at the country level, at the regional level, or at the governorate level. For illustration purposes, let's choose the governorate level. We find that for only a handful of countries, we get the child stunting indicator at the governorate level. Let's click on one of the governorates in Libya. A pop-up window opens that shows us that in Libya, in the Al-Kufra governorate, child stunting was 21.5% in the year 2007. To close this pop-up window, we click on the right-hand side of that window. Moving on, let's reset the map. Now we come to the last category in the framework, crises and shocks. This category focuses on indicators that highlight climate and conflict for the Arab world. For illustration purposes, let's choose the violent conflicts indicator. Right to the left of the time slider, there is a play feature. This play feature, when we click it, illustrates the time progression of time variant layers on the map. If we so choose, we can show the eruption of conflicts throughout one country, at the national level, at the regional level, or at the governor level, if the data is present. Moving on, let's reset the map. Let me draw your attention to the different base maps that are included in the atlas. There are five different base maps included as background to the visual experience in the atlas. For the coming, we will choose the world imagery map. We will choose the continent boundaries. And for an example of how the Arab spatial can zoom in, we will choose an indicator. We'll go to economy and state. Under key sectors, under trade and transport, we will choose the grain storages indicator. As an example, we will focus on only one grain storage facility in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. We will double click. We'll zoom in further, further still, even further. And then we can see how finely we can show the map to show in this case the grain storages indicator for this particular grain storage facility in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Let's reset the map. And we will see another feature of the atlas that allows us to rearrange the layers of the indicators that we have chosen and using the transparency option on each layer. As an example, let's choose the conflict variable. And let's choose the conflict variable for the year 2000. And then let's choose the population density indicator, also for the year 2000. And here we can see that 
by superimposing the population density indicator on top of the violent conflict indicator, we, we can't see the indicator for conflict. And what we're going to do is we're going to click on the little box that's to the left of the indicator in the table of contents, drag it up and place it right above the population density indicator. Right away, we can see that we are able to better visualize the interaction between these two indicators on our screen. Moving on, let's reset the map and let's choose an indicator for illustration. Let's choose GNI per capita. The Atlas allows us to download active data sets that are on the map. The data is available in map form or in table form. We can download the data in table form and the resulting table is a CSV format that we can later use for our purposes, whether they be quantitative or qualitative. One other feature under tools allows us to print the map, the indicators that we have chosen on our screen. We can only print up to a maximum of three layers or three indicators. And then we see that the map is printed. It's printed with the legend as well as the sources of the data used for the indicators on the map. One other feature to highlight is the full screen feature. By clicking on the button to the right hand side of the screen, we can view the spatial experience in full screen mode. We click again, we get back to the default mode. Finally, should you have any feedback or any queries, please contact us at ifbrimena at cgiar.org. We will be happy to answer your queries and hear from you. The Arab Spatial Development and Food Security Atlas is a startup initiative of the International Food Policy Research Institute, IFPRI, that is supported by the International Fund of Agricultural Development, IFAD, and the Policies, Markets and Institutions Program of the CGIAR centers. It welcomes new partners and as an open source and open access database, Arab Spatial will be updated and expanded on a regular basis.